try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The new story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show map today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the the government. Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the major correction that has taken place on Bitcoin and the subsequent rally that is coming to Bitcoin right now. Guys, there is a lot to cover because yesterday we had an effective federal funds rate decision, and yesterday, the Securities and Exchange Commission decided, decided to declare another informal and, dare I say, stupid war on a cryptocurrency, namely Ethereum. This does, unfortunately, put the likelihood of an Ethereum exchange-traded fund being approved down quite substantially, but it also opens up another avenue for the Securities and Exchange Commission to be completely and utterly humiliated in the court of law in front of the entire world, leading into the end of Gary Gensler's term, which means that it will go down as one of the last major blunders that Gary Gensler ever made. We have a lot to cover today, so we're going to jump right on into it. I do appreciate all of you for being here today. Let's go ahead and read some chat. Manuel Solorio is in chat. Sean O'Brien's in chat. Ishmael Ilonzo is in chat. Il Elizondo, I'm sorry, is in chat. It's 420 Woods said, Morning, everyone. Have a blessed day. You know what I saw earlier? I saw that this April 20th is going to be 420 forwards and backwards. Now, I'm not a stoner. I've gotten absolutely no interest in marijuana. I've been offered. I've been around it. Don't like it. All right? No hate to anybody that does it. I don't personally like it. But I did think that was funny. 420. 2024 is 420 forwards and backwards. Just something to point out. Somebody said it is a uh, it is a stoner holiday or something. So have fun to all of you guys out there that are blazing it. Museum of Corruption is in chat. Ar uh, Arslan Ishak is in chat. Jason Berry, Connor Smethurst, Benjamin Bergdorf is in chat. Night Cloud 11, Alex Nibo, Leo's in chat. Richard Jacobson, Sweet Benabare is in chat. Brechet is in chat. Aldo. Car uh, Cardona is in chat. Cynthia Dizon is in chat. Said good morning from California. A is in chat. So you're saying you tried it? Nope, never tried it. Never tried it. No interest in it at all. Not my cup of tea. Hi Jeb and followers. Yes, International Smokers Holiday. Yep, <laughs> that's what. That's what it is. That's it. Hooray! The roller coaster is going back up. That's right. It surely. Is. So let's go ahead and jump on over to Coin Market Cap because we have a lot to cover today. Before we get started, though, guys, I do want to let you know that today's stream is brought to you by none other than the one and the only Blowfin.com. Guys, the reason that I want you to consider signing up for Blowfin is because you are going to be able to have access to all of the exchange features that you need all in one place. Everything that you need from a fiat to cryptocurrency gateway, they've got it. Markets, they've got over 300 spot markets. So if you're looking for a cryptocurrency, chances are they've got it. Over here in futures, you can do futures trading and even on leverage. As you can see, the leverage trading on Bitcoin goes up to 150x. Please, for the love of all that is good and holy, unless you were like the one most experienced trader that I have ever run into, don't use 150x leverage. But if you are looking to try and dip your toes in with 2, 3, 5, 10x leverage, something that's a little less dangerous, even 10x leverage can still be very dangerous. So please be careful and always use a stop loss. Fair disclaimer there. If you're interested in leverage trading, this is an excellent leverage trading platform. They've got their TPSL over here. Please make sure to always have a stop loss turned on, long, short, all of that. They've got a really good chart here. The depth chart is amazing. Loving the depth chart over here. And even over here, if you're not an expert trader, but you still want to make some gains off of the trading, you can come over here and you can do some of the copy trading. There are some really great master copy traders down here that you can make a lot of money off of copying them. <clears throat> So make sure you go ahead and get signed up for Blowfin using the link in the description box down below and get access to all kinds of goodies because Blowfin and us, we are doing all kinds of things together to make it enjoyable for you guys. Uh, we just had a spin the wheel thing just end recently. Um, there's going to be more promotions coming soon. So make sure to go ahead and sign up for Blowfin, get access to an excellent exchange today and start trading now. But let's go ahead and jump on over to CoinMarketCap. Guys, Bitcoin trading at 60. I don't think that's right. Let's update the page at $66,800. Up 5% over the last 24 hours, down 7.3% uh, over the last seven days. So we're still overall in a correction, but that correction may have been over. About a week ago, we talked about how Bitcoin was going to go through a major corrective movement, and we were going to see 
uh, Bitcoin likely uh, b drop about 10 to 20 percent. Well, that has now begun. Uh, Bitcoin seemingly uh, potentially has already completed that movement. And Bitcoin and Ethereum both bounced yesterday on competing headlines. You can see the competing headlines up here. Actually, this community post is saying bet a uh, block. I almost said Bedrock. BlackRock is launching its first tokenized fund, B-U-I-D-L, on the Ethereum network. This is a really big deal. Essentially, essentially, uh, Larry Fink wants to build a tokenization fund in the cryptocurrency space. I'm going to read an article here about it that I want to show you. Uh, BlackRock enters asset tokenization race with new fund on the Ethereum network. Very, very, very funny timing because BlackRock is the largest asset manager on planet Earth. And this news comes out at the same time that the SEC comes after Ethereum because the SEC is now trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ethereum cryptocurrency, calling it a security. So, Ethereum is just all over the news right now. It is being tossed to and fro by a bunch of market forces. Um, we're going to break all this down here in a little while. So stay tuned because we're going to talk about how Ethereum is going to be able to navigate these waters. Hint, hint, I don't think it's going to do anything bad for the price in the long run. In the short run, though, it will definitely cause some turbulence. So we'll come back to this, but stay tuned because we've got a lot that we need to cover to first get there. Somebody said the SEC needs to accept defeat and move on. ETH is like Google. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, I would totally, totally agree with that. Ethereum, despite the news of the SEC coming after them, attempting to classify them as a security, we always knew that it may happen. Um, despite them attempting that, even though the Securities and Exchange Commission has classified them as a commodity before, even the SEC under Gensler has done that. So just like a fickle individual, you cannot know which way the SEC is going to go. Ethereum seemingly has reacted positively to the last 24 hours worth of news because at the end of the day, Ethereum is up 5.7%. Have been very excited to get some good entries. I think I bought some Ethereum down around 3,300 as well. We bought in at 3,600 and 3,300. So excited to get some good entries there. Solana is on the upswing as well, up almost 10% in the last 24 hours, which means its corrective movement may be coming to its ultimate conclusion. Dogecoin is up 15%. Cardano up 4.5%. And overall, the market is green on the day, red on the week because we are in a prolonged down trend, but the last few days have been exceptionally bullish. Hopefully you guys have been able to buy some of the dips, maybe deploy a few percentage points of your cash position. And hopefully you guys are enjoying the positions that you're in right now. We're going to read chat for just a second, and then we're going to jump straight on into our technical analysis on Bitcoin and Ethereum. So stay tuned. If you guys have not already, make sure to hit that like button. We've got over 300 people watching and only 62 likes. Let's see if we can't get up to 150 likes, and then we will continue on here. All right. Gold minus, yep. SEC is a joke. Yeah. ETFs on fire. Yep. Uh, there is going to be an Ethereum ETF. I am almost certain of it. Rumor it has it that BlackRock is buying Ethereum. I would not be surprised at all. In fact, I'd be very surprised if BlackRock was not buying Ethereum. An attack from Gensler is the same as reverse Kramer. That's about right. Yeah, they went straight for the jugular on crypto. And then they went ahead and got backed into a corner and were forced to approve the Bitcoin exchange traded fund. Because ultimately, it's not all about what you want. You know what? Here's the deal. You guys like when I do this, I'm going to get on up. I'm going to get on my, there's my soapbox. I'm about to stand on it. Gensler believes, at least he seems to believe, that because I say so is law. And the last time I checked, and I've looked into this, and so have you, last I checked, and I don't think it's changed since, Gary Gensler, Securities and Exchange Commission, does not write law. They are a part of the, uh, excuse me, of the executive branch. Do you know what executive means? It means it is an organization that executes things. What do they execute, you might ask? They execute the law. But who's responsible for writing the law? The law? Probably the legislative branch. You know what it means to legislate something? It means to write it down and then have it be a law. It is the legislature's branch, excuse me, job to define where there is a where there is a confusion about what the law means. That is not the Securities and Exchange Commission's job. There is obviously a big fat question mark around cryptocurrencies as to whether or not they are securities. And so that is the job of either one, the court system, or two, the legislative branch. The last of the three branches of government that ought to be making that decision is the executive branch. The executive's branch is the branch that executes the law. If I recall correctly, that is taught in seventh grade civics. Gensler? Okay? 
You don't decide whether cryptocurrencies are securities or not. And to be totally honest with you, in a fair world, Gensler trying to do that and manipulating markets up and down by tens or hundreds of billions of dollars would probably end with at least him losing his job, if not imprisonment for market manipulation. Have I gone too far? Have I gone too far? The police officer on the same... Let me tell you a story. Brief story. Then we'll get back to it. We helped an individual about a year and a half ago. And this individual we brought into our home because they told us that they were in grave danger. And I do mean grave danger. So we went on New Year's Eve 2022. We'd been married for less than a year, my wife and I. We went with, while being pregnant with Charity, our daughter, we went with our um, year and a half old son, two year old son, he just turned two, to go and pick this individual up. Brought them into our home, fed them, made sure they were safe, set up a whole room for them. And then this individual decided to, re to say, the house's rules, I'm not going to follow those. I'm going to let people in and out of the window and do stuff with them in, our in the guest room. Here's a true story. I'm not going to say who it is. This is a true story. This really happened about a year and a half ago. It was last January. Yes, right? Last Jan January 2023. That was last January, right? It was right before our daughter was born. This individual did that. And you know what happened? We called the police, got the police involved. And the police came out and said, look, she receives mail here and she has possessions here. Therefore, she has residency, residency here. So unfortunately, as much as I want to, I can't just drag her out and kick her out. You got to go through the court system. You know what? And it's stupid. That was dumb, right? It's dumb. That was the fault of the people that wrote the, wrote the law. But the, re the thing that we ran into was that the cop doesn't get to sit there and play court. He doesn't get to sit there and adjudicate the law because that's not his job. His job is to execute the law. And unfortunately, and the cop felt like this, he felt like he had accidentally handcuffed himself with some of his cuffs because he wanted to drag her kicking and screaming out of there because she was threatening to kill her family. This is a true story, guys. I'm dead serious. We have it on camera. She threatened to kill us. I sound like I'm crazy, but I promise you this really happened. This officer wanted so badly, several officers, because we had to get like 10 cops involved in this. They wanted to sit there and adjudicate the law and say, nope, this is nonsense. Get the heck out of here. Unfortunately, they didn't have the ability to do that. So we had to go and evict this individual from our guest bedroom and post a notice in our kitchen on the guest bedroom door. Never do this, guys. We were so stupid in doing this. This is so dumb. So dumb. Never let somebody you don't trust into your home. <clears throat> learned our lesson haven't done it since nevertheless we had to go through the court system and evict this person you know why because it is the court's job to adjudicate the law and the law says if you have mail here and you have possessions here then you have residency but by the way it's also their house so if they ask you to leave then you have to leave but you have to go through the eviction process and so we had to go through the court system and the court system had to refer back to the legislative branch why am i bringing all this up because gary gensler is in the same branch as those police officers and as much as it sucks, it is a fair system that the cop is not able to sit there and adjudicate the law. If it was a much smaller society and everybody was spirit-filled and they were Christian, then yeah, it would make a lot more sense. But the separation of powers is there to stop one branch of government from taking over and becoming tyrannical. That is why that officer was not able to drag her kicking and screaming out of her house by her hair. I wouldn't actually let him do that. I would have stepped in if they had done that. But tell her to leave, right? They are in the job of, execu of executing the law, not legislating the law, not adjudicating the law. They are in the job of executing the law. What Gary Gensler is doing right now is he is writing new law and saying cryptocurrency is nothing but a bunch of securities. That is the law that I'm writing with my mouth and you can't do anything about it. He is also adjudicating the law when we try and say, but uh, no. And he says, well, no, actually, yes, because referring back to the law that I wrote with my mouth, which I should be held in contempt for doing, that doesn't work. So now Gary Gensler's Securities and Exchange Commission in the executive branch is taking the power of the legislative branch trying to write law about what cryptocurrency is and that is a question that needs to be answered but it needs to be answered by the proper branch of government which is the legislative branch in other words which is the federal congress up in washington which good god almighty i can't believe i'm saying this some part of our lives need to go to congress but it really does <laughs> are you with me here folks are you following and we also need Gary Gensler to get the, out of the job of adjudicating things the good news is the system does still work to some degree because every time that he does this kind of crap grayscale or somebody hauls his butt in front of a judge and the judge still does actually have the authority over Gary Gensler and says, go back and try again, my friend. You're an officer of the law. You're an executor of the law. You are not a legislator of the law. And this needs to be legislated. It is a gray area. So it is not up for you to decide. It is up to Congress to decide. So you need to butt out and say, Congress, we need you to step in. And as the judge, I'm going to say, you don't have a very good reason. And by the way, this isn't your job anyway. So go back 
Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go sit in the jail of court opinion because now everybody thinks you're a fool. That is the legacy of Gary Gensler that he is writing today with this attack on Ethereum. He does not have legislative authority to decide whether or not this is a security. Whether or not something is a security was established in the court, excuse me, in the legislative branch and in the courts, the two branches where it actually belongs. They have the Howey test that they are to apply to securities. Cryptocurrency is something fundamentally different, which means it needs to go back to, it'd be better for it to go to the courts, but ultimately where it actually needs to go is back to the Congress. We set this system up for a reason, and I love this country, and I do not like it. In fact, I hate it when somebody steps out of line on the way that the country is supposed to run. And that is exactly what Gary Gensler is doing right now, because from what I can tell, he is a tyrant who wants the SEC to take over a space before asking the Congress. He seems to be a shoot first, ask questions later kind of individual, and unfortunately, he's not shooting at the right target. Ethereum is a good asset. And sure, it, just like everything else, needs to have regulatory clarity. But classifying it as a security is essentially the same thing as a death nail in it, if that actually were to go through. The good news is, the SEC has absolutely no legal authority to classify Ethereum as a security. Just because they said so is not good enough. I said so on it being a security is only something that a court can maybe do, and that's pushing it, and the legislator can absolutely do that. But the legislative branch has not done that yet. And to be honest with you, it's probably a good thing that cryptocurrency for the time being has stayed out of Congress because a lot of Congress doesn't understand it. In five to 10 years, it's going to become a big hot button issue in Congress probably sooner than that. And it's such a popular idea now that anybody that wants to keep their seat in Congress is probably going to end up becoming either on the side of crypto or at least not staunchly opposed to it. It's growing so fast. Okay, now I'm going to put my soapbox away and we'll talk a little bit about this Ethereum nonsense. So the Securities Exchange Commission is attempting to classify Ethereum as a security. I don't mean to just go entirely into rhetoric on this, guys, but this is exactly what everybody in this entire game, left, right, forward, back, pink, purple, blue, red, I don't care, everybody has observed about Gary Gensler. The man wants power for the Securities and Exchange Commission. That is the only reason that we can understand why he would not do the appropriate thing, which is to call Congress in and call up somebody from Congress on the phone. Heck, I, anyone. Call up Congress and say, listen, this is y'all's job. Tell me what to do here. I'm awaiting your orders. Okay? That is what the job of the Securities and Exchange Commission is to do in case they do not have a very clear definition. Because they are the executive branch. They do things. They don't decide what to do. They just do them. Okay, the Securities and Exchange Commission is supposed to be a hammer, not a master carpenter. The Congress is supposed to be the master carpenter that tells you where to hit the nail, not the hammer. You know what happens when you get a hammer thinking for you? You think everything's a nail. And that's Gary Gensler right now. So anyway, this is going to be a clown show. I can virtually guarantee it. Over the next five years, this is going to be a complete and total clown show for Gensler. It is not going to go the way that he wants it to. And it is going to make him look like a complete and total fool. And if Biden doesn't win, if Trump wins, Trump will end up putting somebody else in charge of the Securities and Exchange Commission because Trump actually had a change of mind. Maybe that was because he just did some research and he repented of his opinion on crypto or maybe because he thinks it's popular. Either way, Trump seems to be a pro-crypto individual at this point, at least a pro-Bitcoin individual. I think he probably realized that the growth of, of Bitcoin is not going to dethrone the dollar. It's not a... It's not a... It's not a... Um, a, um, um, you know, like an existential threat to the United States dollar sovereignty. It is simply another form of money that is actually potentially going to bolster the United States' strength. And so he's not as scared of it anymore. So Trump may end up becoming on our side with the cryptocurrency stuff. And if he does, Gensler's days are numbered and whoever follows him again in a year, I mean, this is election year, guys. In a year, uh, Gensler will be out and whoever follows him um, is most likely going to completely just dismantle this nonsense. The issue here becomes that BlackRock is a big fan of the exchange of, of their Bitcoin ETF. They made buco bucks, I believe is the technical term. If you open the dictionary, it says BlackRock has made, and I quote, buco bucks. I see it right there, right? Okay, they've made a lot of money from this exchange traded fund, and they want more of that because they are a... <laughs> Jeb, talk about GG's prior employment history. Yeah, what about Goldman Sachs? 
Yeah, wasn't it Goldman that he used to work at? Let's see. Oh, Gary Gensler. Oh, Gary Gensler. Yeah. Used to work very closely with all the big banks. All the big banks. He does not like crypto. By the way, guys, if you want to know how to stick it to the big banks, buy crypto and get out of debt. You do those two things, that's the biggest thing you can do to stick it to the banks. If you don't like your bank, get crypto, get out of debt. You will be pulling yourself out of the banking system. You can have a bank account. Um, you'll be pulling yourself out of the banking system. All right, so here's the thing. BlackRock enters asset tokenization race with new fund on the Ethereum network. They are going to build out a lot of infrastructure. BlackRock, like them or hate them, at the end of the day, they are going to bring about mass adoption of cryptocurrency. They are almost not single-handedly, because there's literally hundreds of millions of other participants in this space, but they are probably the largest hand in the entire world that is ushering in mass adoption for cryptocurrencies. And I've been telling you guys for years, ever since before the ETFs were approved, that the ETFs are going to be approved likely around the middle part of this decade. It ended up being in 2024. And then after that, you are going to see an Ethereum exchange traded fund approved within probably about three years or so. And after that, you are going to end up seeing um, an, some index funds and a lot of funds being built where you can buy the fund and the fund contains different cryptocurrencies inside of it. Similar to how the Standard & Poor's 500 ETF trust was created. You are able to buy, quote unquote, the market through purchasing this fund. And when that occurs, I am going to advise you guys to purchase that. I'm going to recommend, I suppose. It's up to you guys. So please don't just do what I say just because I said, think about it for yourself. But I'm going to recommend that you buy that fund so long as it's a fair price, right? And you still have some cryptocurrency and self-custody. That is going to be a good thing to buy because it's going to appreciate and it's going to, and it's going to lower the beta, keep the alpha high. It's going to be a good investment product. And that's what BlackRock is attempting to build right now is they're starting to get into the space of building out funds, not just as one singular ETF because an ETF is basically like a Lego, like one Lego. It might be a big old fancy Lego, but it's still just one Lego. You can't really do much with one Lego. It's cool. But if you start building out funds, that's a little bit like having a Lego set. You got a bunch of different Legos and they build something beautiful. And it's going to make BlackRock a lot more than an ETF. Guys, the ETF was never the end goal. The ETF was never the end goal. It was the first step. It's a little bit like the wedding day, man. That is not your end goal. Getting married the day you get married, that's not the end, that's not the end of it. That's the beginning of your new life. The only thing that is the end of is the end of your old life. Now you're moving into a new and better life. And so that's kind of what we're looking at with ETFs. The day that we saw the ETFs approved, that was the end of the non-institutionalized cryptocurrency. It was the beginning of the institutionalized cryptocurrency, and we do have to be careful about how that grows. But for better or for worse, that's the direction we're moving. There are going to be more exchange-traded products, and no one can stop that. Period. Gary Gensler cannot stop that. I'm going to be honest, no sitting president could stop that. It is going to happen by popular demand because luckily we do still live in a democratic system where there is not so much oppression that if 100 million people want something, they don't get it. They're going to get it. They're going to be exchange traded products, all kinds of them that are securitized and tokenized that are able to be traded on stock market. Uh, on the stock market and in brokerage accounts and into 401ks and into Roth IRAs. BlackRock is going to make a lot of money with this, and so are you, because when these products get online, they're probably going to perform very, very well. And by the way, they are going to have a component. They are going to have, uh, they are going to be working with Ethereum. So Ethereum is going to end up moonshotting because of this. Everything that I just said, from the lack of judicial authority, the lack of, um, uh, jurisdiction would be the technical term. The lack of jurisdiction that Gensler has over all this, that frankly, in a just world, he would be prosecuted for stepping out of line on because he's impacted the wallets of tens of millions of Americans in a negative way. Because of all of these factors and the fact that BlackRock is on the side of crypto, and to be honest with you, BlackRock is more powerful than the SEC by a country mile, um, and the world wants an Ethereum ETF, you're going to see an Ethereum ETF. Does this mean that we're going to see one in a couple of months when we originally, originally thought? Maybe not. I could see Gensler's SEC holding out for a time, but not for that long. There's going to end up being an exchange-traded fund for Ethereum, and it's just something that is not really avoidable. So this is one last attack from SEC on crypto that, in my opinion, is going to strike fear in the hearts of some people, as Gensler wanted it to, because he seems to be a harbinger of fear for cryptocurrency investors the world over, but it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. If Gary, if Gary looks slim, it's because he's been eating nothing but his own words since 2018. Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. Why did I name these four? They're not securities. Direct quote. 
direct quote. Gensler has already made it very clear that he believes out of his own mouth, not just his own commission, out of his own mouth, he has said that he believes Ethereum is not a security. But he's failed with Bitcoin's ETF. He's failed with a lot of the other charges against Coinbase and Binance. Those have mostly been quagmires for him. And so he's trying to get any territory that he can. And it is completely sad. All right. All right. Let's read chat for a little bit and then we will continue moving on here. Jeb, can we get a Peter Schiff debate? I don't know. People are saying, yeah, but he's also pro-white. But hey, look, I'm not supporting or standing against Trump. I'm not I'm not making a, pol a political stance. I'm just stating factually that he has changed his mind. Vote for him. Don't vote for him. I don't really care. Please do vote. It is your um, it is your um, duty as a, and it is your great privilege and right that people have died for in the United States. So please do your research and, do, and do, go vote. Um, please don't vote unless you know what you're doing, though because <laughs> it is important. Every vote counts. But I'm not trying to campaign for Trump. I'm just saying that if he does get elected, Gensler's probably gone. And Gensler goes down for the loss again. Okay. All right, guys. Let's keep it moving here. All right. Next thing we're going to talk about here is Bitcoin briefly, and then we'll move on to Ethereum. Right now on Bitcoin, we are currently sitting below the previous all-time high. We have what is known as a widening, like a megaphone pattern going on here, a falling megaphone. This does indicate that a lot of volatility is coming back into the space, and a lot of times I think that this is going to be a reversal pattern. Um, we have seen the beginnings of an inverse head and shoulders pattern forming here as well, and if, it, and if Bitcoin does drop down to like 6,500 or so and then bounce, that would be a very strong inverse head and shoulders pattern. I'm going to be honest, guys. I think the majority of this correction may be over. We originally called for a 20% drop. We dropped 17.6%. I would say that is within a margin of error that is acceptable for that call. We started calling that we were going to have a drop on Tuesday back over here. Just a few days later, that drop began. And I encourage you guys to have cash and not go into leverage longs because you would get wrecked. And then buy the dip. Don't trip, but buy the dip. And so many of you ha guys have. I'm very excited about that. Last week has obviously been bearish for Bitcoin, but I think we are simply preparing for our next leg up. This is a beautiful, beautiful amount of consolidation. And some people are concerned that there's a head and shoulders pattern forming here because it does look like a head and shoulders pattern forming. If that head and shoulders pattern is forming, then that could lead Bitcoin on a drop down to $50,000. Well, if Bitcoin does drop down to $50,000, that'd be a 31% corrective movement. That would be the biggest percentage drop that we've seen so far this bull market. If that occurs, that doesn't mean the bull market's over. It just means that Bitcoin has even more spring power. If we drop down to 50, which is our worst case scenario right now, and we double, we'd go to 100. It has been very common for Bitcoin to double or nearly double in the event of a lot of these rallies. We uh, moved 91% here. Uh, we have done very, very, very well for ourselves on Bitcoin whenever it goes through a major corrective movement. When Bitcoin goes through a major correction, it ends up rallying about 80 to 100%. So even worst case scenario, let's say that Bitcoin does drop down to $50,000. I think it would I think it would be reasonable to expect a 80% movement from there. An 80% movement from there would be 90 grand. So what's our move? If you're an investor, continue your dollar cost averaging. If you have a large pile of cash, consider putting maybe like 5% of the cash position in every week, something like that. Don't dump it all in. I want you guys to always... Always, always, which is why we use percentages, right? Because it's asymptotic. If you do 5% of 50,000, then that's 2,500. If you do 5% of 4,500, then that is uh, 2,250, right? You're going down, but you're never actually going to drain it down to zero. Use a percentage of the cash position each week, maybe 3%, maybe 5%. You won't actually completely drain the cash position because the amount that you put in every week uh, goes down. But with the price going down, then you'll be getting about the same amount of Bitcoin, which is exceptionally good. And you will be holding on to cash in case Bitcoin drops down to like 30. You can go and scrounge cash together and do that. But right now with us being a good bit below all-time high, it wouldn't be a bad idea to put maybe 1% to 5% of cash position in each week. Um, Lower your average cost basis back below the all-time high if you are at all able. And then consider doing the same thing on ETH. Guys, Ethereum is having a pretty large correction right now. And this is a very exciting moment in history. Because this is one of our corrective movements that we are going to end up looking back on and saying that this was in the middle of the rally. This is a great pit stop to grab some ETH. On Ethereum, we are currently finding support on the 0.786 Fibonacci level, which sits right around 70, uh, sorry, $3,400. 
This is a level that is probably going to hold, and if it doesn't, then Ethereum would probably drop down to 2600 Buy ETH at 2600 guys, if we drop down there. But right now, it's an excellent place to be buying some Ethereum. I'm probably going to go buy even more today. Really excited about Ethereum's future. I don't think that Gary Gensler is going to win this. Yes, Gary Gensler did just declare a war, but to be honest with you, it's a little bit like, uh, let's say, uh, Oklahoma declaring war on the rest of the United States. It's not going to work out very well for them. Okay, so Gensler is screwed. Let's see. Doesn't screwed have an S, C, and an E? Yes, exactly. So he is SEC screwed. <laughs> That's not how you spell it. But, um, it's not going to work out well for him. Uh, in the short term, it could be FUD for, for Ethereum. Next four to next three to six months, it could be FUD for Ethereum. Um, I don't think it's going to, in the long run, damper Ethereum. It's going to end up becoming... Um, it's, it's an unstoppable train, in my opinion. I think ETH will at least 3x from here, which is a great, great, great return. And to be honest with you, you may consider holding Ethereum for the long run. Bitcoin and Ethereum are the two projects right now that I would heavily encourage you to consider holding for the long run because if ethereum does get institutionalized with an etf and with the other funds that blackrock is building that basically means it's here in perpetuity that basically means it is going to be here for the long run it's got 50 billion dollars of tvl built out on it and it's not even close to its all-time high from last bull market a quarter trillion dollars in tvl is likely going to be what it goes to a 20 30 40 50 thousand dollar ethereum is probably what we're going to be seeing in the future so to be honest with you when you look at a three thousand dollar eth and you say that's a lot I wouldn't be surprised if it was worth $35,000 one day. I think a 10x in Ethereum is still possible over the course of the next 10 years. So on these dips, definitely consider buying some Ethereum, not just for this cycle, but for permanence. That is what we are considering doing ourselves. So let's go ahead and read some chat, and then we will continue right along here. 50k retrace would be an awesome dip to buy. Absolutely it would. SEC investigate Ethereum. It's confirmed, not a security. And then ETFs launch, all planned with BlackRock. Maybe that I could see that. Uh, Sovereign Stacker. I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. Is Sol the best buy right now? I don't think it's the best buy, but I still think it's a pretty solid buy. I think it's still a pretty good buy. Trump is rock solid on crypto. He'll protect Petrodollar first. That is is... That's his job. Yes. No, he's obviously going to protect the dollar, and as he should. But I don't think he is um, in a position anymore where he feels like the cryptocurrency market is actually a threat to the dollar. I think he sees it as something that can coexist, and actually we can benefit from the dollar as a nation. All right. Do you think ETH will be taken off exchanges like XRP was? No, because honestly, I think everybody is going to do this. Let me just show you what everybody's going to do with the Ethereum, with the um, with um, with the Securities and Exchange Commission. This is what they're going to do. Like you're like let's just, you're the SEC. I'm so sorry to put you in this position, but let's just pretend you're the SEC for a second. On the exchanges, they're going to do this. They're going to watch, watch really closely. <laughs> Now, that's what they're going to do. That's going to be the response of the exchanges to the Securities and Exchange Commission. You know why? Because the because grayscale just uh what what is the technical term we've got to pull out some more technical terms here guys i'm so sorry to use these big terms they um drop kicked the sec that is the technical term is what grayscale and and xrp and ripple brad garlinghouse and and, and company and everybody else has done to the, to the sec their reputation is in the gutter it's in the gutter coinbase who is actively in a lawsuit against sec right now is almost certainly not going to delist Ethereum. If they do, I would be very surprised. Very surprised. Will Bitcoin go below 65k before it will take off? Guys, most of the drop that I wanted to see has happened. I was predicting a 20% drop has dropped 17.5%, so I'm much more in the bullish camp. All right, we are in the middle of a blue sky bull market. So I'm not going to get super uh, confident of more correction right now. I'm not totally sure it's over. Um, but I'm not going to get super confident in a greater correction. If we br come over here and look at Lux Algo, uh, Lux Algo has some very good things to say on this. We do have a confirmed sell signal here on the daily chart, but that just gives us a take profit. Take a look at this. Lux Algo gave us a take profit right down here of, you guessed it, about 20%. <clears throat> in fact, the midpoint of the take profit on Lux Algo was 19.5%. I didn't make the product. By the way, I predicted that we would drop 20% four days before the Lux Algo sell signal came in. I'm just saying that Lux Algo also predicted the same thing. We have a confirmed sell signal, so we're in a confirmed downtrend. So technically, you know how it goes. We don't say we're in a confirmed uptrend until we've had the confirmation. We haven't seen that yet. So yada, yada, yada. We just have to be careful. 
in the long run, we have actually hit the take profit on Lux Algo. And I don't think we're going to have to have it updated take profit. If we did, it would drop down to 50 more than likely. Maybe Bitcoin drops down here one more time. I wouldn't bet on it. I would just be, um, you know, not trying to time the market being opportunistic. If you open Coinbase right now, if you open Blowfin right now, it's a 67K. That's better than 73. So potentially consider putting a small extra percent. Maybe you're putting 100 bucks a weekend, maybe put 120 bucks a weekend, right? Ladder in a little bit heavier as it goes down. Bitcoin is a solid long-term pick. Um, what I will say is that there is still that head and shoulders pattern here. And if that head and shoulders pattern does play out, then you might see a Lux Algo take profit update to right around here. Um, but the other thing I want to mention is that uh, the Crypto Jeb Oscillator, uh, which is our own custom-built oscillator that we built in partnership with Lux Algo, is do it, uh, did a really good job here. Let's just go ahead real quick and remove RSI so we can see it a little bit better. You can see that the bullish strength has uh, come down. And the velocity of change has switched and the bears are actually uh, increasing in, in strength right now. But during bull markets, historically, when you see these little dips right here below the zero level on the crypto job oscillator, which, by the way, like I said, guys, this is the indicator that we built in partnership with Lux Algo. Pretty much every time you see uh, the bearish strength start to take hold in this bull market during these times, for example, the market ends up being kind of at a bottom. OK, it's cyclical. It's every few months you see that happen. <clears throat> And uh, pretty much every time the market ends up rallying, as you can see here, off of those dips, because the reason we're dipping down into those levels is because of the correction. Well, I mean, it's oh, sorry, <laughs> behind the scenes. Um, what I was trying to say is, let's see if I do that again. There we go. What I was trying to show you is that all of these <coughs> market cycles are about the same size, right? They're about a month or two long. See that? And so we're already believe it or not, a weekend, we're actually pretty far into the drop. I could see us dropping for another week or so. But to be honest with you, after that, yeah, based on the way the market's moving right now and all the exuberance, we're probably going to be done with the drop and we'll probably keep moving to the upside. We had this corrective movement over here on Bitcoin for 12 days. Bitcoin has been correcting now for about seven. So could there be more be uh, bearishness to come? Yeah. Is there a lot more bearishness to come? I don't really think so. To be honest with you, I think we're getting to the point of being out of the woods. So I wouldn't just sit there on your hands <coughs> waiting for a sub $65,000 entry. Um, 67 is still a pretty solid entry considering where we're going, especially if you're going to hold Bitcoin for the long run, as I think everybody should. Is Lux Algo free? It is not. It is an extremely powerful technical indicator that has literally taken hundreds of thousands of hours to build over the course of the last several years. So uh, it is not free, but you can get 20% off by going to luxalgo.com forward slash Jeb. You can find the link for that in the description box down below. And you'll also be getting access to the crypto Jeb oscillator. By the way, luxalgo.com forward slash Jeb will bring you to the new landing page that has been built in partnership with Luxalgo. So check this out. This is pretty cool. Luxalgo.com forward slash Jeb now has a custom landing page for us. As you can see, if you go to luxalgo.com forward slash Jeb, you'll see where it says Crypto Jeb, and it will even give you some information on the Crypto Jeb Oscillator. This is the Luxalgo mainline indicator, and then down here is the Crypto Jeb Oscillator. <coughs> Introducing the exclusive Crypto Jeb Oscillator in collaboration with Jeb McAfee. Hey, that's me. Bring your trading view charts to the next level with the most powerful oscillator for efficient technical analysis. Works on any market, including all of crypto. What that means is that you can also use it in the stock market. It is a very powerful oscillator that was built by Luxalgo and yours truly. It was my idea. They did the coding on it, and it turned out beautifully. Absolutely a match made in heaven. The Crypto Jeb Oscillator introduces a full systematized approach for trading real-time divergences, following trends, and finding key reversal points. If you want to figure out where the market's going to turn around, it is the indicator for you. It's one of my favorite indicators. Not just because it has my name on it, but because it actually follows along with the philosophy that I have. Because, like I said, I was the one that made it. As far as I was the one that came up with it, they were the ones that coded it. So I definitely want to make sure that we know that it was a partnership. I am not the genius behind the coding on this. That would be a guy named Alex who works behind the scenes on all the indicators. By the way, the Crypto Jab Oscillator was developed by that fellow named Alex. He is the head developer of all the indicators over at Lux Algo. So he is really, really good. He is a master technical analysis craftsman, uh, technical indicator craftsman. He created the mainline indicator. So the same people that brought you um, the main Lux Algo indicator are the same people that brought you the Crypto Jab Oscillator. Bringing our idea to life was a great honor. So make sure to go to luxalgo.com forward slash Jeb, sign up, and get a big discount when you use our link. Cool beans. All right. Let's read some chat here. Tom Crown in chat said, Jeb and Lux Algo hype. Tom did it. Tom did it. 
He hit 100k. He didn't do it on stream. So disappointed in you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but he did hit 99.9. .9, so I think we sent maybe 20 or 30 over. Tom, you'll have to tell me how many subscribers we were able to send you on that day. But Tom hit 100k. He is now in the six-figure club. Very exciting. You and I both now get to race to the two-comma club for subscribers. So let's see. I am officially declaring a war on Tom Crown. First to, 100, first to a million. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He'd beat me. He'd whoop my butt. Guys, make sure to go and subscribe to Tom Crown if you have not already. He is also a great technical in, uh, technical indicator. Great technical analyst. <laughs> just want to see if it was free or not. Got a whole promo. There you go, Fighter Club. <laughs> Solana worth in bull market 1K or realistic 500? My prediction is 600 to 800. 1,000 is stretching, but I think it's going to happen. Um, ultimately, if it goes to 400, I'm going to start selling at probably around 400. So I want to be clear on that. I'm going to start taking some profits, like maybe 1% to 2% a week at 400, because I want to lock in profits and take out that risk as quickly as possible. If an asset is quadrupled, man, take the house money out. <coughs> Which our average entry on Solana is less than 100 bucks. It's already doubled. So if it gets to three, four, five hundred 500 bucks, I might just take the house money out and then start taking 1% or 2% out every week after that. Because what I see in financial coaching, because I do financial coaching almost every day right now, um, is that a lot of you guys had a big portfolio at the top, and it wasn't that you didn't know how to get in, you didn't know how to get out, and you held the bag all the way down. And that sucks, because then you don't actually realize the profits. So make sure if you are invested in something that you have a very clear take profit plan that is more conservative than you think it needs to be, because taking some kind of profit is better than getting no profit at all and holding the bag back down to below where you bought it. Because then you actually just ended up losing money, even though halfway through it, it was worth 5x what you bought it for. That's no good. Good afternoon from Lancashire, England. Good afternoon. Don't underestimate the power of BlackRock. If BlackRock wants the Ethereum ETF, they will get it. That's right. That is right. That is right. All right we're going to read a little bit more chat, and then we are going to wrap it out. Guys, don't be freaked out about Ethereum. In closing, just don't be scared of it. It's still a great project. It is going to be adopted. It's a roller coaster as it always is, but this is not going to change hardly anything. It is going to do very, very well. I do believe. Now, things can change, but from what I can see, I do believe that it's going to perform very, very well in the bull market. All right. Chainlink prediction, over 100 bucks. Just made a video on that last week, so go check that out. XRP showing strength. You know what that means. Market will dump shortly. <laughs> right. Check TVL on Solana. That's a good indicator as well. Yes, we did check TVL on Solana. That's how we came up with a potential $1,000 price target. If you go and watch our video most recently, then we actually explained just that on Solana. So make sure to check that out as well. Guys, we are out of time. So before we go, I do want to let you know that today's show is brought to you in part by NordVPN as well. So make sure to go and sign up for NordVPN by going to nordvpn.com forward slash Jeb and protect yourself for the duration of the bull market. It is so critical that you invest in security. I just got a phone call yesterday that somebody had gotten hacked and they lost $23,000 from their Coinbase account. And they got hacked because of some things that I'm pretty sure NordVPN would have actually protected them from. I'm not totally sure. I didn't get all the details, but from what it sounded like, I think NordVPN actually would have helped. So make sure you sign up for NordVPN with the link in the description box down below. You don't want to be like a friend of a friend. I actually think I know this person um, who lost 23000 That was basically all they had. They put like their life savings in and they are devastated. Twenty three grand. I mean, this is somebody that is, you know, my age and, you know, most people that are 23 like me, they're not making... X, they're, you know, working, making, you know, 12, 15, 20, 25 bucks an hour. This person just lost $23,000 in their Coinbase because they got pwned. Now, I'm not totally sure the NordVPN would have stopped that, but I think it actually would have because I think it went through a link. Long story short, um, some of their information got out there and it shouldn't have been. But if you invest in security architecture and keep yourself safe, it's going to make you a lot less likely to lose all of your investment. So make sure to sign up for NordVPN. Please don't. Please, please, please. It just breaks my freaking heart. Please don't get hacked. Um, please stay safe. Don't click on links that you're not familiar with. Don't pick up... Nor By the way, Coinbase is never going to call you. Let's just get that clear. Just please be careful with your money. Um, yeah, anyway, sign up for NordVPN. Get a big discount on a two-year plan by going to our link in the description box down below, nordvpn.com forward slash Jeb. And uh, that's going to do it for today. I'm going to go. But before I go, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video.
Peace. Oh, I got a real good feeling. Got a real good feeling.